Hey folks, I'm back to cover round six from the 2023 US Open being held here in Grand Rapids, Michigan. In this round, I was paired against international master Joshua Postuma, who I actually believe is from Michigan. And uh, yeah, this was a very interesting game. Uh, we we're playing on board two in the traditional schedule, the nine day, uh, nine, nine day section. And um, yeah, I felt like this was a very big game. I had four and a half out of five points going into this round. There's two players with five uh, playing next to us on board one. So I was definitely hoping to win this game with white to have good chances going into the, the rest of the tournament. So I start d4, knight of six, knight of three. He ends up going b6, c4. And we essentially transpose into a queen's Indian here. Um, but black plays b6 a little bit early. So after knight c3, e6. Um, we have a couple more options here uh, as white. There's a few things I could have played. I could have played g3 in this position, for example, but I decided to try this one with knight c3 and a3. So this is the so-called uh, Petrosian variation. But here black has fewer options because normally they have a choice between bishop b7 and bishop a6. Here they've committed to this one. But that said, it's still a very, very playable line for black and, and very, very solid. Um, so d5, this is the typical way to play. I took, knight takes d5, and now we can't go e4 yet because of knight takes c3 and the pawn would be hanging. So queen c2 first, black played uh, knight takes c3, bc, bishop e7. There's different ways of, of playing black could start with bishop e7 as well, um, and at some point play for c5, but eventually the point is white is going to get the center with e4. And it looks quite nice for white at first glance, but black is going to get a quick c5, and in fact, he plays it right here. And eventually, black does get counterplay against white's uh, center. So this is like a typical structure we often see it in like the semi-tarash opening, um, where white gets this big center. But of course, it's really not super easy for white to uh, to get anything more than maybe like just a small advantage here. Um, so I castled, and here my opponent thought for a little while. He ends up going c takes d4 which I was definitely happy to see. I feel like this move is actually a serious um, kind of strategic mistake in this position. Because after CD4, now white's bishop gets to B2, and I think white's position frees up quite a bit. And I can slowly orchestrate this uh, D5 break in the future, rook D1, rook E1, try to play for D5, and white gets a very good version of, uh, again, this is typical structure from the, the semi-tarash where white is a nice center, but here we've managed to keep three minor pieces on the board, so I feel like white space advantage is actually pretty significant. So instead of taking, there's lots of games here. I think black could have played um, knight d7, for example, queen c7, and just keeping the tension and not um, trading off the pawns, because then white has to sit with the bishop on b2, where if white hasn't taken on d4 yet, you know, there's not really a lot of d5 potential. So um, yeah, I feel like this already gave me some chances in the game. Uh, knight d7 was played, bishop b2, rook c8, queen e2. Yeah, I feel like this was all perfectly fine and that I had a comfortable game. Queen c7. Now I decided to go rook a d1. I wasn't totally sure where to put the rooks, but yeah, I didn't feel like rook c1. I didn't think I really wanted to ever trade uh, rooks in this position, so I ended up deciding on just putting rooks in the center and then trying to play for, for d5. So rook eighty one knight f6, and yeah, here I thought for a little bit, because I was deciding between a couple moves. Um, at this point, I think black wants to go like rook to d8, and then try to get some counterplay. A lot of times, black is looking for some b5 ideas, if they can make it work. Um, so a couple moves I was considering here, like rook e1, knight e5, and then the move I ended up playing, bishop b1. And um, I think this is actually quite, quite okay to start with this. Um, though, yeah, the other options, rookie 195, definitely very tempting here as well. With bishop b1, I kind of anticipated my opponent would play b5, and he ends up doing this because it looks very natural. I can't take the pawn without giving up the e4 pawn, and if I play e5 to hit the knight and then take on b5, it looks like black lost the pawn, but then he has knight f4, and actually black gets a ton of counterplay on the diagonal. He has rook b8 ideas. The knight here is super strong. And this would actually be, I think, really, really annoying for, for white to, to deal with. Um, but on b5, I actually had a different move in mind, and that is the break d5, 
which is quite thematic. And I calculated some lines here um, that are pretty important to see. If black takes twice on d5, let's say for example with, um, let's say with the knight, then this one is simple, just rook takes d5, queen d3, white has this double attack and just wins the game right away. Black has to defend the mate and then we have two pieces for the rook and uh, very, very active position. Um, if bishop takes d5, then we've got bishop takes f6. And the point here is that if black recaptures, then of course there's rook takes d5. And if bishop takes f3, then we just take back bishop takes f6 and queen f5. Very important move at the end. Threatening mate. And if black plays g6, they're losing the bishop. And so this is really bad for black. They have to go like maybe try this move, but then white takes. And then we can start hunting the king down, rook fe1. And yeah, black's king is just in for a, a world of hurt. So I was feeling pretty happy with this because black can't really take the pawn um, twice. And I'm threatening to take on e6 and spoil black structure. I'm also threatening ideas like d6 followed by e5 winning a piece due to the fork. So I think my opponent found um, one of the better tries here with takes and rook fd8. Maybe rook cd8 was actually more accurate um, because in the game after rook fd8, I ended up playing bishop f5, which is kind of hard for black to deal with hitting the rook. Here I spent a lot of time, you know, I was trying to figure out what to do. I really wanted to play rook fe1, but I just couldn't make it work after knight takes d5. Um, because if I take on d5, bishop takes, and then take on e7, I think, uh, among other things, black can simply take here, take on f3, and unfortunately after takes, rook d1, black is winning, uh, going to be up in exchange. So this just doesn't work for white. And uh, yeah, rook f1 would have been nice after knight takes d5. Yeah, I looked at all kinds of ideas like knight e5 and, you know, of course, bishop takes h7, bishop takes g7, all these sacrifices. But yeah, nothing seemed to be working in the position. I ended up finding bishop f5, which I quite liked because it hits black's rook. And he can't really go rook b8 because then that runs into bishop e5, forcing bishop d6. And that would let me take on f6. And this kind of structure would be very, very weak. Um, for black's king. We end up getting something similar to the game except without the d-pawn, so uh, quite a big difference. Um, so bishop f5, he goes rook a8, which feels like a sad necessity, but but what else to do? Otherwise, black would have to uh, sacrifice the exchange. And uh, yeah, here again, I started spending a lot of time trying, because I, I felt like my position w was good, and I think this is the right evaluation, but I wasn't course totally sure how to how to best proceed so I looked at a lot of lines um, like bishop e5 for example I considered but then in like queen c5 here from black and uh, yeah I just couldn't quite make this um, make this work for me I also looked at rook c1 forcing queen to d6 because black has to keep the bishop defended and uh, but yeah here I again couldn't figure out how to follow up and of course, at some point, black is going to be winning this d pawn. So the big thing to understand, of course, I, I can take on b5 at, at any moment. But if I take on b5, black takes on d5 comfortably. I think black is generally going to be fine in this situation. So it really needs to kind of justify their play with a lot of uh, a lot of precise tactics. Um, so I end up going d6 here which, yeah, more out of necessity. I just couldn't really find a, a better try. And now my idea is, of course, if rook takes d6, I have bishop e5, winning winning material. So bishop takes d6 is basically forced. I take on f6, gf6. And yeah, we've sacrificed the pawn. Black has, you know, two very strong bishops. But I felt like the weakening of black's king should give me at least enough, enough counterplay, and maybe even just a very, very strong attack. But I wasn't sure how to proceed from, from here. So I considered a lot of moves here again, like knight d4, rook d3, rook f1. Um, all these moves crossed my mind. Eventually, I decided on knight h4. Basically, I felt like I had to move this knight because I need to open up the queen to get to g4 or h5. Um, this, of course, sacrifices a second pawn, which my opponent takes, king h1. But now I did feel like things are very dangerous for black because we have queen h5 coming. h7 is obviously weak. And uh, if I can get my knight to f5 as well, 
the knight could be really strong there too. Um, so here black goes bishop f4. And I was still up to mystic, but I realize now it's not going to be very easy. Queen h5, h6. And now, yeah, it's really not clear how white should continue the attack. Um, if I move my bishop back, trying to get knight f5, then black can start where the rook takes d1 and rook to d8. And this really messes with my coordination because black is hitting the rook on d1. And I have like back rank issues with the bishop covering h2. So it's really not that easy for white to set up the uh, the attack here. That's why I probably, back, going back here, I was thinking probably should have went with knight d4. I really wasn't sure during the game. I thought the knight on d4 might be a bit of a target. But here, the difference is in all these lines when we get queen h5, black isn't able to trade off the rooks and generate this counterplay based on the back rank. So here I think white actually does get um, at least enough for a draw after something like this. Like queen h5, I think white is doing okay. Queen g4 check is also possible with the idea like king h8, queen h4. And um, I think black has to give this one. In some position like this, I think white is doing at least all right. Um, very, very active, of course. And there's all these sacrifices like knight e6, bishop e6 that can be considered here too. So yeah, after knight h4 takes bishop f4, queen h5, h6, all of a sudden I realized... My attack here isn't actually getting anywhere. I'm not, not generating the threats. I end up going rook d e1 because I wanted to avoid trading rooks. Um, but now rook d5 comes and black starts getting a lot of counterplay. And I'm still two pawns down. So if the attack doesn't succeed, you know, I'm already, I'm already starting to get nervous about um, being down material. So check king h8. And uh, yeah, I decided to go rook to e4 here. Um, but this this is already based on a miscalculation. I start really, really going wrong here. Because rook e4, black goes bishop g5, rook f e1. And yeah, my idea was to try and infiltrate with either rook e8 check or rook e7. But I just missed that black can play rook e5 here and actually shut down the, the e file. And not only that, now when I'm taking on e5, f e, of course I'm fixing black structure and improving their pawns. Now we're no longer playing against the double pawns. So this ends up giving black a pretty serious advantage. I think bishop e4 here would have been better. And I definitely considered this one as well um, with the idea of meeting like rook g8 with queen f3. And it's a very, very complicated position. Um, a lot of stuff is hanging. Black can try like queen d6 or rook g5 to keep this one um, defended and yeah, sack the exchange, but things would be super, super unclear. Um, but yeah, with rook e4 and rook e1, basically if you don't see rook e5 coming, this also looks pretty pretty good for, for white. But of course, if I had seen rook e5, then I probably would have um, would have gone for, for bishop e4 anyway. So yeah, once we get here, I took on e5 and I play knight f3. I really didn't defend from this position um, well at all. I think bishop e4 was necessary, just trying to trade the bishops off right away. And basically already just playing for um, playing for a draw. So for example, takes, takes, rook e8, knight f3. And black is much better, two pawns up. I have some chances because black's king is weak. Um, and there's a little bit of uh, you know, a little bit of drawing chances here. It's not easy for black to convert. But um, yeah, this is what I had to do. Though objectively, black still has a very, very big advantage there. So I tried knight f3, um, hitting the bishop. But now bishop f4. And I can't go g3 because this is just too weakening on the diagonal. For example, queen c3. And yeah, I feel like I'm I'm just collapsing. Also, this is move 30 and a little bit uncharacteristic for me, but I was getting into time trouble um, mainly because I was spending so much time earlier in the game, you know, trying to find something concrete and, and, and find the right way. But after I wasn't able to, yeah, I ended up finding myself in this position, very t uh, difficult spot and, and not a lot of, of time. But... Yeah, that happens. You know, if you spend all your time and you don't find the right moves, you're going to get into time pressure at some point and it's going to be tough. And yeah, that's just how it goes. So I tried queen h5 and I'm now looking for some tricks with knight takes e5 and queen takes h6. But yeah, I realize already for, for quite some time at this point that yeah, I'm in big trouble. And if black defends well, then I'm, I'm just down two pawns. Um, and so yeah, rook g8 is played. 
hitting uh, g2. So of course I can't I can't take on e5 and and let black take on g2. And now I tried bishop e4, but this was actually the worst um, the worst moment to to do it. I basically needed to just make any move, just rook d1, just accept that I'm I'm much worse here, and yeah, um, not try to do anything. After bishop e4, the problem is concrete. Black can take and go queen to c2. And I actually saw this during the game, but yeah, I just couldn't bring myself to to try something else. And here, unfortunately, black is just winning concretely because they have a lot of tricks on the back rank. So queen c1 check wasn't working because of rook e1. But here, for example, you know, I can get very excited about this move because we have queen takes h6. But number one, black can take back and, and block on h7. But even simpler is queen c1 check. Um, in, in between move and then just taking on f4 and then black is totally in control um, So yeah, basically nothing works if I take on e5 with the knight Then black has the back rank and I no longer have e1 covered um, And so yeah, I tried rook takes e5 But the issue with this is well number one black could take on e5 with the bishop If takes there's queen h7. I would probably try knight takes e5 just looking for some counterplay, but I'm sure black is winning here. Um, but even simpler is queen takes f2. Because I actually don't have any real threats, but now black is starting queen takes g2 mate. And if the knight moves, then there's queen f1 mate. So I have to play queen h3. But now just rook to g3. And yeah, it's game over because uh, queen has to move. If queen h2 is rook takes f3. Uh, I have some checks, but king g7 and the checks very, very quickly run out. So, yeah, basically nothing to, to try here at this point, and I just had to resign. Um, so, yeah, tough game. Very tough game. I felt like I had my chances, and I had a nice position out of the opening, you know, when b5, d5 happened. I definitely felt like I played this very well. But unfortunately, in this position, after rook d8, bishop f5, rook a8, yeah, I just wasn't able to find like the computer way forward, you know, to um, to make this work for white. And of course, the d5 pawn here is is very weak. I think the engine was showing some lines like rook c1, queen d6, rook f e1, knight takes d5, and then just knight e5, and saying that white has a very strong attack um, with queen h5 threatened here. And so one idea is that if black goes g6, white can like sacrifice the bishop with queen f3. And, uh, and play for the attack here, but this is very very difficult to see and calculate all this uh, During the game, so this is one where I really have to go back and analyze because Objectively, I think what I did was fine, but it does leave me in a situation where all of a sudden I have to like You know play like an engine to um To get the uh, the biggest advantage that said what I did here with d6 and takes I think this was Reasonable I could have conducted the attack a lot better here with knight d4 Maybe at least gone in a, a perpetual or, or something, but yeah, I definitely could have played this phase of the game a lot, a lot better than I did. And then my defense in this game was definitely not not great um, at uh, at all. Um, but yeah, thinking about the middle game, other options here like knight e5, for example, rook f1, those might have been better um, alternatives. And yeah, I'll definitely have to analyze and, and break this one down a little bit more. So unfortunate result, but. Yeah, interesting game. You know, life goes on. Uh, I'm gonna, <laughs> gonna try to learn from it. And uh, we got three more rounds left in the tournaments. I'm sitting on four and a half out of six. So I'm gonna try to have a good finish, play three more good games, try to learn from those games as well. And uh, yeah, hopefully I'll see you folks uh, in the next videos. Thanks for watching.